making us all frightened. Yeah. <laughs> so far in the fact that it's... Hello, Epic Hero. I'm Hope Pennington, and this is... Griffin Keels, who has a YouTube channel. Also, I've got a weird yep. name for my YouTube channel. It's Gambia's Grandma. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so like people who don't know the reference just are like, what are you talking about? But it's a really, really niche reference. What's it gonna be about? Uh, I'm gonna do uh, reviews for different comic books. I'm really gonna use it to support the actual like official releases of the material because uh, there's a lot of big problem nowadays with people who read manga, Japanese comics, who read the illegal online uh, scandalations. Since I'm starting off as a comic, trying to get into the comic industry, right. I wanna start actually supporting the artists who make them, especially the ones who are just starting off and don't have the, the massive followings. Which is segue into what we're talking about today. We're talking about um, indie comic creators, why you should be one, and what it's like to be one, I suppose in Austin, because that's where we are. I actually just learned, or from one of the people at the comic meetup, mm -hmm. that Austin is apparently the, like, one of the birthplaces of indie comics in America. That does not surprise me. Yeah, like, I mean, it does end up being in Austin, here. yeah. Um, but it's weird, because even though it was kind of like the birthplace, it doesn't seem to be, it's not like booming, it's not like that no. big of a thing here anymore, which is a Yeah, a shame um, so be. we met at an Austin comic artist meetup. Uh, it's been in my vlogs a couple times that I started when I moved to Austin a few months ago. The reason I started it was there was no were no meetups anywhere in Austin that I could find anyway uh, for comic book creators. There were things for writers, filmmakers, and everything else, but... Literally everything else. You yeah, everything that you can think of except for comics. So I feel like a lot of people that wanted a comic book meetup ended up coming to mine, so that was cool. But it's just kind of frustrating how little... Uh, it seems like there are a lot of people and a lot of, uh, I guess, a lot of interest in indie comics. So it's just kind of weird that that hasn't really become a big subculture of Austin. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's really a big shocker because living here in Austin is a it's a gigantic like art scene. Like growing up, like everybody's a musician. Like everybody knows people who are pursuing music as a platform. They're pursuing television and the film industry, from painting mm -hmm. to dance, all these forms of expression. But yet when you ask people like, oh, do you know anybody who makes comics? Like, no, it's not a thing. And recently what like got me into it is uh, I had a friend of mine who I was working on a story with. And he had, um, had a story he was working on that he really wanted to make into a film. But I thought about it and I talked to him and I realized, like honestly man, like the chances of this script, the way, the story that you envision in your mind, mm -hmm coming to fruition the way you want it to through the film industry yeah. is is very small. Yeah, and you probably already have contacts that are good artists, because there are, the same as there being a lot of just comic book writers, or uh, there are a lot of comic book artists, or people who would like to be comic book artists, uh, floating around out there, so it's kind of good for both parties. And even if, yeah. even if you end up just producing it, and show, sharing it with a smaller audience, I still think it's worth it, because you've got your story out there, at least for yeah, me as a I mean, creative, like, yeah, I as, a, myself. as a creative person myself, Great. like creative um, writer, I would much rather for have like tell the story that I really want to tell and have it be true to what I envisioned, mm -hmm. even if it's a smaller audience, than like take the risk of I oh, I'm gonna get it out to all these people, yeah. but it's gonna get so watered down and it's gonna end up not being like exactly what I wanted to tell in the first place. Mm -hmm. Even for the local artists that are here and that are making it, I feel like there's also a lot more of ways that we could be going around producing those and actually getting them out there for, um, for the public and making yeah. it something that's easier for people to make because it's just like a lot of people haven't really been pursuing it as much as I think they could in Austin and I think that ultimately with a couple of changes and a, a little bit easier of a platform to get it out there it could go from being you know almost unheard of to an actual an actual way of really expressing yeah. yourself in Austin. It's like it's all like bubbling goal. under the surface. It's like about yeah, to dude, like boil rough. over. That's, that's what we're hoping for, yeah. Different to like when I was like making music and I was doing those other art forms, even though there's a lot of fans, there's a lot of people who want to do that, there doesn't seem to be a structure in place. Yeah. Like for it to be as accessible. Um, but it's not because it's like impossible or it shouldn't happen. It's because nobody's actually taken the time to really do yeah. that yet. Um, I know that um, locally, if you do create and like self-publish your own, all the, a lot of local shops are willing to and love to take local writers of comics and put, keep them in their stores. That's Austin by Austin. It's all yeah, local. no, they, they always love to support locally. While that's a great addition, I think part of the problem is people are pursuing that kind of local side of it too much and they're not trying to be a little more ambitious and take it further. Mm -hmm. So then it stays, in a sense, it's kind of staying within the community. But separately, you know, I'm working on my own company right now with the entire, the entire goal of it is to figure out 
the best way for Austin like to take this to the next step with these artists to actually take your art and get it out to the people who aren't necessarily gonna see it, but maybe in Austin would wanna see it or other right. people. Like find the best way when you have a story to get it to the people who would wanna read it. And there's a story of One Punch Man, which I'm assuming like most people, a lot of people have heard of One Punch Man. Mm -hmm. It is a story that has internationally like become a phenomenon. I work with people who I would never guess are into like comics or anything like that who know and love One Punch Man. Yeah. And that started off, like the art you see for it is not how it started off. It started off written by a guy who was trying to like practice his drawing skills mm -hmm. and the level of art was not, I mean, it wasn't professional by any means. Yeah, no, it was something that like anybody can draw to that level. Like my little sister could draw some of that art. Yeah. But at the same time, he had a story and idea that was unique enough and creative enough of enough that he decided to draw it the way he wanted to draw it and draw his own story. Mm -hmm. And then he got people to be attracted to it. He, he found a way for people to, to find his art and actually, you know, like a story uh, yeah, a story good. and go to it. And he drew enough attention that just starting off with his hand drawn, you know, low art story, it was able to gain the traction to find another artist for it and to be, ha make an anime out of it, which has now gone internationally and has become yeah. just a massive story. Exactly. But first of all, your art doesn't need to be uber professional um, immediately. I mean, obviously do your best, but it doesn't have to be because you can get better over time. But also some comics are meant to be told in a more cartoony style and you can, uh, you know, pick the idea that you have that goes more with that style so that you can draw it yourself, hand draw it. Some of the, some of the comic strips, especially when you're going more like comedic, yeah, no, definitely. action can be very, very simple. Um, so. And like sometimes you can find a way, um, and that's why I think the guy who made One Punch Man did really good. So he found a way to actually incorporate his lack of drawing skills as some of the humor into the actual yeah. show. So when you're reading it, a lot of the jokes he would tell was based off of just like the low quality of art he would do for like his main character Which and like the genius. Blankets. Yeah. It's kind of like my first novel being a comedy about how everything's cliche. Because that way yeah, I could yeah. just I could just write cliche, cliche and it's supposed to be that but, way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have leaned back to the, the light thing he doesn't get like so. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's, it's is, moving, moving up moving. since the since the video it was a, down it's here. It's a metaphor for how comics are moving up in the world of art. Exactly. By the time it gets to our faces, <laughs> we'll be a success. Yeah. If, if you're a storyteller, if you are somebody who wants to tell stories or like be a visual artist or pursue, or pursue <laughs> <laughs> like a type of um, like storytelling, comics are a, I think a much bigger option than people like, you know, think about or even like yeah. consider. Most people don't even consider that as an option. But really, like when you break it down, especially for the indie creator, for the person who's like on their own trying to get this out, just starting off like with no connections, it's gonna be one of the most realistic ways to pursue getting that story across the way that you really wanna get it across. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, hit the bell if you wanna be notified when I make new videos. And until I see you again, always remember that we are epic heroes today and every day of our lives and i'll see you in the next video bye <laughs> yeah that's my salute i usually show the person in case they want to do it but whatever it's actually awesome, awesome. <laughs> like, uh, thank cool. you yeah. it's like the hashtag and then you know, i would have i would have messed it up too i would have been i'm just doing like, <laughs> you know, like um... yeah <laughs>